In a school, 391 boys and 323 girls have been divided into the largest possible equal classes. Largest possible equal classes. So that each class of boys numbers the same as each class of girls. What is the number of classes? So let me reread the question and explain this to you, right? In a school, 391 boys and 323 girls have been divided into the largest possible equal classes such that each class of boys numbers the same as each class of girls. Now, what do you mean by this statement here? Each class of boys numbers the same as each class of girls. Means the number of boys in each class numbers the same is nothing but equal to, is equal to the number of girls in each class. See, understand, boys, I mean, the classes will have only either boys or only girls. It, it is not going to be a mix of boys and girls, right? So, whichever class has got boys has got the same number of boys as the classes which have got the number of girls. You understand? What is the number of classes? The question is, what is the number of classes? What is the number of classes? So, in, in a nutshell, I think 391 boys, 323 girls, they have been divided. So, we are forming classes for boys and classes for girls. The condition is that they have been divided into largest possible equal classes. The class size should be as large as possible. Right? Class size should be as large as possible. And it should also follow the condition that the number of boys in each class is same as the number of girls in the classes of girls. The number of boys in the classes of boys should be same as the number of girls in the classes of girls. Now to explain you using numbers, let, let, let me take an example. For example, here he said that there are 391 boys and 323 girls. 391 boys and 323 girls. Number of boys and number of girls. Now here it's a little bit of challenge, but let's say there are 100 boys and 100 girls. What happens? What happens in this case if there are 100 boys and 100 girls? See, we want the class size to be as large as possible, largest possible, largest possible equal classes. The class size should be as large as possible and the size should be equal for all the classes. If there are 10 students in first class, there should be 10 students across all the classes. If there are 23 students in one class, there should be 23 students in all the classes that have been formed. And the size should be as large as possible. So if 23 can be 24, you should consider 24. If 24 can be 47, you should consider 47. So if I take 100 boys and 100 girls, what happens? I can simply say that there are two classes. There's one class of 100 boys, one class of 100 girls. So number of boys in the class, 100. Number of girls in the class, 100. And total number of classes will be 2. Suppose there are 110 boys and 100 girls. Then what happens? The number of classes cannot be taken as 2. Because... I mean, can I now say that boys will be 110 and girls will be 100 in their respective classes? No, because number of boys should be equal to the number of girls in each class. The class of boys has got 110 students. The class of girls has got 100 students. Is it equal? No. This condition is getting violated. The second condition is getting violated. We cannot have uh, 110 and 100 as students. So number of classes cannot be two. Then what should we do? We should try and divide them in such a way that uh, the size is as large as possible and the number of boys and number of girls per class are equal. So I think what we can do is uh, divide them in, uh, I think, sets of 10. So 10 boys per class, 11 classes, 10 girls per class, 10 classes, 11 plus 10, 21 classes. Now, how do we decide the number? The number is simply the HCF of the given values. HCF of 110 and 100 is equal to 10. So number of students per class should be 10. So if there are to be 10 students per class, number of classes for boys will be 110 by 10, which is 11. Number of classes for girls will be 100 by 10, which is 10. 11 plus 10 is 21. Similarly, in the previous case, see, previous case was easy to crack because there were 100 and 100 students, right? HCF of 100 and 100 is 100 itself. Highest common factor between 100 and 100 is 100. So I can say that number of boys in the class is 100, number of girls in the class is 100, and there are only two classes. Let's say there are 75 boys and 25 girls. In this case, what will happen? Same. See, we want the class size to be largest, right? So this largest is indicating that you have to take the highest common factor. So I'll consider the highest common factor of 75 and 25. What is the HCF of 75 and 25? 25. There can be 25 students per class. If there are 25 students per class, then the number of classes for boys will be how much? 75 by 25. 75 boys. I can have 25 boys per class. Number of classes will be 3. 25 girls. 25 girls per class, number of classes will be 1, 3 plus 1, 4. In this case, the number of classes will be 4. So this is the requirement. He's asking us to find out the number of classes that will be there. There will be 2 classes in this case. There will be 21 classes in this case. There will be 4 classes in this case. So what do we do? Find out the highest common factor between the numbers and then divide the total number of students by the highest common factor to get the required answer. Are you able to follow? Let me take one more value. For example, let's say there are 36 uh, boys 
and there are 42 girls 36 boys and 42 girls can I take a class size of 36 no not possible because if I take the class size is 36 number of girls should also be 36 then the remaining girls are 6 but there cannot be a class of 6 girls right the number of students per class should be equal can I take the classes is 42 no if you take 42 students in one class number of girls will have one class but boys are less than 42 so not possible can I take the class size as 8 throwing some random number can I take the class size as 8 no because if you take 8 students number of classes for boys is not possible at all because this will be like you know 8 and a half I mean 4.5 right 36 by 8 is 4.5 so you cannot have four and a half classes. So basically I'm looking for a number which is common for both 36 and 42 and the highest between them. And I'm looking for a factor of 36 and 42. That number should divide 36 and that number should divide 42 as well. Like for example, I can take seven. 42 by seven is six, but is 36 divisible by seven? No, so seven cannot be the number. That number should be a factor for both 36 and 42. And it should be the highest such factor because I'm trying to form the largest uh, class possible there, right? So I have to consider the HCF, HCF of 36 and 42. What is the HCF of 36 and 42? 6. 6 is the highest common factor between 36 and 42. It's a factor of 36, it's a factor of 42 as well and the highest such factor. So I can now say that the number of students per class have to be 6. So how many classes for boys? 36 by 6, 6. How many classes for girls? 42 by 6, 7. 6 plus 7, 13. So the answer in this case will be 13. There will be 13 classes. So to find out the strength of the class, you have to take the HCF. To find out the number of classes, you have to take the total strength divided by the HCF. In this case, there are 391 boys and there are 323 girls. So largest strength, that's what I've already explained to you. Largest strength will be the highest common factor between 391 and 323 which is equal to 17 so 17 is not the answer all those who have marked 17 are wrong 17 is not the answer 17 is the strength of the class 17 is the maximum number of students that can be there in each class why is it 17 because 17 divides 391 17 also divides 323 and it's the highest such number that divides both 391 and 323 so basically the highest common factor he's asking us to find out the number of classes number of classes will be equal to what total number of students divided by strength per class so 391 plus 323 divided by 17. Do the calculation, it comes out to be 42. So option 3, 42 is the right answer.